High voltage surge arrestor performs a critical role in your substation, but how do you safely test them in the field to ensure they are still working properly? When you have a surge arrestor on your system, you want to test it because the surge arrestor over time has been taking hits of lightning and switching surges and some of those lightning and switching surges are beyond its capability or its designed uh, parameters. You want to test an arrestor immediately after you've installed it and then at regular intervals at say six and nine months so you can get a trend line because you want to be able to determine when you want to replace it at a regular schedule outing or an unscheduled outing which means the arrestor has uh, failed and it has caused damage to the other equipment and possibly personnel in the substation. Watts loss is one of the most common tests in the field. It is done by disconnecting the surge arrestor and taking measurements. This takes time and labor. It also was developed many years ago for a silicon carbide gap arresters who had a lot of components that drew, drew a lot of Watts loss. The new metal oxide surge arresters are very tight in their design and they have very low Watts loss because they draw very low currents. This inaccurate data leads to the possibility of falsely detecting if the surge arrestor is good or bad. Another common method of testing surge arrestor is using a surge counter. Surge counter counts the number of operation the arrestor has taken surges to ground over a period of time. It only can tell you the number of times it happened. It does not tell you the severity of those surges. Without knowing the severity of those surges, you really do not know the true health of the surge arrestor. Another option with the surge counter is a leakage current monitor. This leakage current monitor will measure the total leakage current that's going across and through the surge arrestor. Unless this measurement is done under the same conditions, you're not getting a true reading of what's going through the inside, but you only get a reading of what's going on the outside. And this measurement's only really telling you how dirty your substation is. The latest method for testing surge arresters is using a surge arrestor monitoring device. This device is a combination of the surge counter and the leakage current monitor, as we previously talked about. The surge counter part of this device measures the uh, number of surges that happen over time and tells you the time and date they happen and their general magnitude. Now this gives you visibility to solve previously unrecorded events on your system. You want a leakage current device that's not going to just measure the total leakage current, but it's going to try to measure the resistive component, which is the current that's going through the block. When this current starts to deteriorate over time is a true indication, and the only true indication, that the surge arrestor is about to fail. Another feature of a good monitoring device is to be able to collect the data remotely without having to go into the substation itself. Now that you've captured the data, you can go back to your office and trend the health of the arrestor over time. I've just shown you a few ways of, of testing surge arresters. Watts loss, surge counter with and without leakage current monitor, and a surge arrestor monitoring device which can be read remotely. I am George Taylor with ABB Inc.